Love him or hate him, Salvador Dali is one of the most recognizable artists on the planet. For some reason, this man's art continues to fascinate millions. Whether images of his paintings are gracing the walls of a dorm room, or used as desktop backgrounds, there's no debate that, in terms of mass reproduction of imagery, no one tops Dali. I think it is mandatory that every 14-year-old interested in drawing go through a Dali phase, and I must admit that my own relationship with Dolly's work seems to be one more of nostalgia. Nonetheless, Dolly is an extremely easy entry point into painting. His work is highly modeled and excellently crafted. Everyone who looks at Dolly's bread painting must agree, this guy could seriously paint. Then on top of that you have an explosive imagination, long-legged elephants on parade and clocks melting in barren landscapes. One thing about Dali is that he isn't really taken seriously in the art world. When people hear someone saying that Dali is their favorite artist, they kind of classify them as naive romantics, or they lose, or they lose points for not being creative enough. If you want to sound cool when somebody asks you your favorite painter, it's generally a good idea to say someone obscure like Louis Wayne. What? You don't know Louis Wayne? Oh my god, he's only the most famous painter of cats who became schizophrenic and continued to paint these absolutely insane psychedelic cats? Okay, you see my point. I think the big reason people don't like Dolly is because he's just too damn popular. But in secret, everybody kind of loves him. Salvador Domingo Felipe Jacinto Dali y Domenech. Like the accent? Was a Spanish Catalan born in Figueres, Spain. He also had an older brother, who was also named Salvador, who died. When little Salvador was five years old, his parents took him to see the grave of his brother, who was also named Salvador. So he stood there, in a graveyard, looking at a gravestone, with his name on it, when he was five. To top things off, his parents decided to tell him that he was the reincarnation of his brother. I don't know what kinds of messed up parents they had back then, but I think it's safe to say it's generally not a good idea to do this. Believe it or not, Vincent van Gogh also had an older brother, named Vincent, who died before he was born. And we all know how that turned out. Anyway, Dolly spent a ton of time chilling on the beach and drawing pictures while he was growing up. In the summer, he got to hang out with a landscape painter named Ramon Pichot. Remember that Salvador was only 12, but his enthusiasm towards drawing was so evident that his parents decided to nurture it. Just by looking at these cartoons he was drawing at age 12 and 13, you can see that Dolly undoubtedly was the kid who could draw. By age 14, he had set up a studio in an unused washroom in his parents' house, and he began to paint. In Old Man at Twilight, we see one of Dolly's first paintings. He had probably messed around with paint a bit during his summer trips to the beach house, but now that he had a studio, you can see someone who is determined to become a painter. There are a few technical things which spring to mind. First of all, it is certain that Dahlia already had a good understanding of paint application. He is not afraid to get messy with it and is quite loose and free. He also connects the darks of the legs to the ground. This is something which was very popular with post-impressionists such as Degas. The idea being that the brain will fill in the extraneous information. This is also a rule of design. It's called closure. The composition isn't the best, and the figure is basically smack in the center of the painting, but hey, the guy's 14, maybe we should give him a break. A bunch of attempts at realism continue on throughout the next few years. So the years pass, and it comes time to go to college. It's the same old story. The stern dad is scared his son will never make a penny from being a painter, and reluctantly sends his son to school with the exception that Salvador must obtain his teaching credentials so he can have a career. Salvador also wrote like mad and kept a diary all throughout his teens. After his parents told him he would be allowed to study art, he made this diary entry. The supreme and perhaps most important decision of my life since it indicates the direction that I have to follow is the following, which has been approved by my family, in parentheses. I shall quickly finish my remaining studies, doing the remaining two years in just one. Then I'll go to Madrid to the Academia de Bella Arte, 
There, I intend to spend three years working like mad. Anyway, the academia is a fine place. Then, by sacrificing myself and submitting to truth, I will win the prize to study for four years in Rome. In coming back from Rome, I'll be a genius, and the world will admire me. Perhaps I'll be more despised and misunderstood, but I'll be a genius, a great genius, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Very confident. Uh, the first thing I have to say about this di diary entry is, who is he writing this for? He has already made up his mind that he is going to be famous, so at this point it is almost as if he is leaving an easy road for the future historians to follow. At the same time, it retains a certain teenage naivete. He basically starts off saying, My parents said it's okay, and then goes on to talk about how he will become a great genius. Glad his parents let him. And then it's 1922. Dolly makes this self-portrait of himself. I think it's fair to say that if Dolly were alive today, at this point he'd probably be pretty damn emo. Wearing a large hat, smoking a pipe, and casually glancing at the viewer. The darkness surrounds him with mystery. Needless to say, I imagine he didn't have much of a problem picking up the ladies with this image. And it is the same image that still kind of irks a lot of critics to this day. He seems to embody a very st stereotypical artist artistic personality. He's wild, hard-working, eccentric, but also intelligent and it flamboyantly dressed. The question many have is whether or not it is all an act. To which I say, who cares? I mean, really, who cares how he marketed himself or developed his personal brand? He left like a zillion paintings all over the place, and they're great paintings. Some of them. So Dolly is going through art school kicking ass. He's painting all the time, and he begins to show and sell his works. It is also important to remember that Spain during this time was a political firestorm. There were numerous anarchist, fascist, and communist rallies, and the monarchy, which had ruled Spain for, for so long, had become unstable. Sometimes the government reprisals against the anarchists were bloody. By 1923, Salvador was the star pupil in his school. He and many students really wanted their favorite teacher to become the professor of open-air painting. Well, after someone less qualified was given the position, the students became very angry, and Salvador actually led a protest against the school. For this, he was expelled for one year. He then goes to another school in Madrid and does figure drawing. During the same time, the dictatorship of Rivera comes to power in Spain. Dali is active in many protests against the dictator, and because of this, he is imprisoned for a month. He was then released because there was no evidence against him. Just his ideas. By 1925, Dolly is back in school, but he's becoming increasingly, increasingly difficult to teach. During one of his assessments, he tells the school board that they aren't competent enough to judge him. He gets expelled again. Even though his technical skills seem very high at this point, as is evident, in the painting Bread. By this time, he has many close artistic and intellectual relationships. We can see by his paintings that even though he abandoned his school, he, can, he continues to paint very traditional female nudes. This should be an example to all of you aspiring surrealist painters out there. If you want to learn how to paint, paint the figure. Dolly then has a cubist phase, which is offensive to even look at, and then he starts making these landscapes. I believe that they come from Joan Miro, who was also an upcoming Catalan star, and someone Dali undoubtedly admired. Compare Miro's The Tilled Field in 1923 with Dali's early experiments with these types of landscapes. The similarities are strikingly apparent. Then in 1928, Dali paints Little Ashes, which seems to be a breakthrough painting for him. He begins to create these dreamlike landscapes filled with various creatures, optical illusions, animals, and naked people. But this is already 1928. Dali is 24, and the Surrealist Manifesto was written back in 1924 by André Breton. So it seems that instead of pioneering the Surrealist movement, as many believe, he actually came in pretty late in the game. But these barren landscapes full of sexually charged imagery would become his home. And this is what we all know Dolly for today. <laughs>